Hey, how's it going? I want to do a uh, video on uh, building a kitchen island here made out of IKEA stuff and how I'm modifying it to make it work for what we need. Um, I'm going to try doing this video a little bit different. I'm going to actually video kind of a different segments and sort of splice it all together. So we'll see how it looks in the end. And um, let's start with uh, the first thing I'm doing here. So. On the floor, uh, I don't know if you can see this tape here, kind of got some tape on the floor, like marks, uh, kind of like on a stage. And that's the uh, that's the approximate location of where this cabinet's gonna end up being. And you see the big coil right there? That's the electrical line. Um, I'm using uh, uh, armor clad uh, MC cable that's uh, 20 amp rated. Um, so I'm gonna run that up and start providing power into the unit itself. Um, the unit's basically three boxes. So the one on the left with the little little gray looking thingy, that's a trash can that has a power activated uh, push mechanism, which uh, I'll show you in a second here. In the middle, this is gonna have a speed oven and microwave and then a drawer that I did a little video on, on building a custom drawer here. And then on the right is just um, kind of like a wire shelves. And then on the far right over here, I'm gonna to try to build a little wine rack uh, system as well as some outlets for um, plugging in like iPhones and stuff like that. So that's basically the design. Um, I'm gonna show you guys a couple things that, that I did that should help make things better. Um, number one, Ikea sells like really, really bad feet uh, for these islands. They're like horrible. So I already did a video on this, but um, this is the foot that I'm using. And you can see them down underneath there. They're all along the bottom. And what they are is a, is a composite. So what it is is the, uh, the metal feet that they sell. So these metal feet actually, give me a second. So I don't know if you can see this, but these metal feet screw onto this post just like this. Um, this post is welded. Uh, there's like lots of places to screw in bolts. So you get a really, really strong fit. This particular thing is called uh, Capita 18612. Keeping score at home there. Um, the only problem is that the uh, toe kick won't clip to this because it's designed for like an open look. So to get around that, what I did, let's screw this. So if you have this little metal foot, you pull off the bottom, it's like a cork stopper. And you go buy the ones that are designed to work with the, um, with the toe kicks, put them over top, and it will actually, I don't know if you can see this, but if you push in, it's gonna clip in perfectly. The diameter's perfect. I go crazy with uh, a glue gun. I just fill this with glue from a glue gun. And then, uh, Put the bottom stopper back on and now that thing is uh much much stronger you can put that back in your in your little uh metal rail there just like that and then this is a the clips that go with the toe kick they'll clip on and it's going to be wicked strong compared to the things that they give you so that's the first thing i did i went down there i i replaced it i'm using eight feet I'm using uh, one under each of the ends and then one underneath each one of these uh, sections right here, these upper sections, uh, to try to pick up the load and try to help keep the box together. I've also cross screwed the box together um, to try to kind of tighten all those together. Second thing I wanna show you guys real quick here. So let me show you what the Ikea drawers normally look like. So uh, when you build a box, um, they put these brackets on here, so these little guys, and then they sell, it comes with this kit here, so it's called uh, Sectin, I don't know what that means in Swedish, um, but it's 00298411, and they sell this piece of wood with it, and the idea is that you're going to you're gonna put that behind, and you're going to bracket multiple boxes together. But as you can see, it's really only like, um, let me pull back a little bit. It won't reach 
the full length of three of these boxes. It's also kind of flimsy, I mean, if you ask me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use two by fours, uh, big long two by fours, to tie the whole thing together. But if you notice down at the bottom, all they give you is a way to tie the top together. Um, what I ended up doing, let me show you in this box here. So what I ended up doing here, let me zoom in a little bit, is I put these brackets on the bottom and I cut out this little notch on the panel. So now the, the panel is the same on the top and the bottom. Uh, there's actually these, uh, you know, brackets uh, opened up. Um, and I'm gonna run two, two, two by fours. So I'm gonna run a pair of two by fours on, uh, on this back section and tie all these together all the way across like that. So um, that'll give me a lot more strength. And eventually there's gonna be an overhang for, for uh, part of the uh, quartz countertop. And that will give me something to bracket, to put the brackets into. Um, so I'm gonna run one two by four on the top, one two by four on the bottom. And then I just gotta figure out how to kind of secure them together with, so I can use the bracket system. Uh, so that's what I'm working on right now. I'm working on the electrical and I'm working on kind of tying this together and modifying these so that they can fit two sets of two by fours. And uh, I'll give you guys an update here in a little bit and uh, we'll come back and show you how things are going. All right, uh, here we are on the other side of the cabinet. Welcome back. Um, this is uh, how I'm gonna be doing um, all the framing on the back of the cabinet to kind of tie everything together and give me a good stable platform to anchor some brackets, as well as how I'm gonna do some of the back panels here. So um, what I ended up doing, uh, kind of as I described there, is I ended up putting a uh, long two by four along the top, another pretty long two by four along the bottom, and then I just cut up some two by fours uh, to get some uh, vertical pieces, like you see here, these four vertical pieces. Um, one thing, so I don't know how experienced people are, but uh, when you're buying your your wood uh, at the store, one of the most important things you're doing is just making sure you get a nice piece. Anytime you're checking wood, um, to make sure it's straight, look down the end, get really nice, clean, straight pieces of wood, especially like two by fours. Uh, not all two by fours are created equal. And so, I, you know, I, I bought the premium version of the two by four, the four dollar and fifty cent version. Uh, got really nice straight pieces because this is going to be like a spine for this uh, kitchen island. So you want to kind of invest in like nice pieces, take your time, get some good wood that's not all bowed and makes everything really hard to put together later on. Um, so this is kind of like I said, the spine to the, the back of the cabinet. Um, if you've ever seen like an upright piano, they have like a really solid frame behind the piano to kind of keep everything together. It's the same idea here. Uh, over on the left here, I'll come over here and show you. So that's how I'm mounting my brackets. So uh, as we looked at it before, kind of go down here, show you a good view here. So we've got the, um, the, the piece that's connected to the Ikea cabinet. This will be bolted right onto there. And then I've got this piece, this nice piece of angle iron. This is, I think, quarter inch steel. So it's super, super strong, uh, way stronger than the job's gonna need. Unfortunately, um, what's gonna end up happening here is I'm gonna end up having a panel that rests here. So I had to recess this uh, bracket into the two by four. So when you have it like this, let me show you real quick. So, once it's recessed like this, then you won't have any issues with anything obstructing uh, a panel that ends up getting put on here by recessing it. And I'm gonna show you how I did that. And then, uh, you know, like I said, I kind of built this little, uh, this little box here. Um, I'm gonna show you how I put it together. I'll show you the tool that I used, okay, if anybody's interested, and that will kind of help explain things. So, used a lag bolt on here, really short one. 
And this isn't the final one. This is just sort, sort of for uh, explanation. All right, so we'll take this apart and uh, I'll show you how I put it together here for framing purposes. So let me go right about, about there. All right, so I'm gonna pull up on this. So, give me one second here, I'll show you how this is framed together. <laughs> good enough all right so uh, what this is is uh, this is using a mortise and tenon system uh, that Festool does so when you're doing something like that you end up drilling these little uh, these little mortises in and then it uses this thing called the domino it's kind of like an oblong dowel puts it into position that lets you tie everything together uh, with a really nice straight strong joint plus it indexes the wood and keeps it in the right position so that later on when you get your bracket the brackets will will fit on nicely and everything will look good um, so to uh, if you wanted to use a system like this you could um, it's pretty basic so this is the tool you use it's called a domino tool so I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna put these little two pieces of wood together so all right so what I did is I put a little uh, hole in the end of this one and then I put a hole on the far end of this one let's start put the domino in there they click together and there you go now you've got that uh, that kind of frame piece um, the other thing I had to do to, to do mine is I had to um, kind of cut out this this channel here and cut out this piece so let me show you how I did that real quick so we'll go over to the table saw. but essentially what you do to do this is on the Capex table saw is actually this little feature right here. And when you click it down, it, you can turn it, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna lock the blade so the blade doesn't go too far down. So when you're cutting with this, again, this isn't plugged in right now, what it's gonna do is it's gonna prevent the blade from going all the way down. Let me show you what that looks like. So it prevents the blade from going all the way down. And essentially what you're gonna do is just do a whole bunch of passes with the saw to cut a whole bunch of little strips out. And then once you get cutting all, get done cutting all the strips out, uh, you'll have a piece like this where it's notched out. Um, definitely make sure that the pegs still fit in there. <laughs> I probably should have put the uh, mortise holes a little deeper. Uh, I wasn't really thinking about having to recess the, the bracket when I made those holes, but there you go. So, all right, so uh, first off, um, I used this tool when I was putting together the frame, this uh, Festool uh, DF500Q. This thing is crazy expensive. Um, I wouldn't buy it for this project. I just happen to have it. So I wanted to show how I used it in this little project, but you can do as much with a nail or a screw and actually nail up through the, through the two by fours. Um, just wanted to go ahead and show what I'm using this for. So, um, I used some tight bond glue to put it together. If you haven't used wood glue, this is the stuff. I love this stuff. And now uh, everything is bracketed together. Um, grab the camera here, kind of show you a few things. So there's the brackets. Um, I used a couple of these larger fast grip uh, lag bolts uh, onto this thing. They're short enough that they don't go all the way through, uh, but they've got a nice strong head, so they'll be able to keep the, uh, the brackets from, from snapping the heads off. And then I used a ton of these cabinet screws. So everywhere you have the pieces, this all screw together, um, and that's gonna make it pretty darn strong. And uh, when I get done, I'll show you this real quick. 
when you get done, you can uh, use these little Ikea, Ikea um, trim pieces to cover all this up. So it'll look, when you're looking from the cabinet side, it'll look pretty good. And like I said, you can use it on the, uh, on the lowers and the upper pieces. And then finally, uh, the next step I'm gonna do is we're gonna uh, cut some of this stuff. So this is just a cardboard, particle board, chipboard, I don't know what you call it. I just call it like fancy cardboard. Uh, melamine foil backer. And we're gonna put it on and that backer is gonna fit uh, over top of this because we recessed this all in. So um, we're gonna cut a big slab, throw it on here, and it's basically gonna act kind of like the panel does on this side and hides everything. It's gonna hide everything and then we're gonna go from so, there. So uh, getting ready to cut the back panel that I'm gonna be using um, kind of as a, kind of make it look a little nicer behind the, the uh, the kitchen island before I hang my actual um, hard, hardwood panel doors. So I want to show real quick how do I cut this stuff down uh, working with sheet goods. So over on the left here, you can see a regular sheet of uh, wood. We're gonna be using this for the countertop um, kind of temporarily. Plus it gives us a way to kind of mock up what it's gonna look like because we're gonna use a waterfall island. Uh, so I'll show you how that works in a bit, but how do you break those big sheets of plywood that are in the US? They're four by eight uh, Which is a giant piece of plywood. How do you break it down to usable sheets? I use a track saw system um, it, You know some people on the channel probably already some people watching this probably know exactly what I'm talking about Some people don't so I'm just gonna cover it real quick So basically there's tracks the saw goes on there. It glides down You're gonna see it in a second here and it cuts um, whatever we want to cut um, I bought two sizes of track and I kind of think this is like the optimal size unless you're cutting something huge like gymnasium floors or whatever. I use the 3000 uh, millimeter rail and a 1080 that's 1080 rail. Um, those two rails, as you can see, it's long enough to cut down a full size sheet of plywood it's rare that you're working with something over that length. You can actually put them together. There's a piece that allow them to connect together, but I've never used that. Um, it's easier just to move the giant rail. Over this size, over three, three meters basically is what that is. Um, it, it's just so unwieldy. I can't imagine working in a house with it because <laughs> that there's another one that's like 5,000 meters, but I wouldn't, or 5,000 millimeters, five meters, which is pretty darn long. That's basically what it is. So recently I had to replace the um, splinter guard on it. This is the splinter guard. And the nice thing is it's made for the 5,000 uh, millimeter rail. And that lets you replace the splinter guard on both of them. So that's, that's awesome. Uh, to get a square angle, I use a nice woodpecker square, woodworking square that I've used forever. It's great. You can line it up to the rail. Uh, but most of the time I'm just making tick marks on the wood. So I've made tick marks on both of these uh, pieces of wood right here. And then um, what I did is I used this stuff, it's called frog tape. Um, and it's like a green tape, uh, which is kind of cool, it's festival green, but that's not why I bought it. Uh, well, maybe a tiny bit why I bought it. But basically it is really nice uh, masking tape that comes off and they also make like a delicate version. What I'll do is I'll just tape the rail down and then when we cut it, there's no chance it's gonna sneak away um, I'm cutting it on just some Owens Corning foam insulation and I am cutting it on a hardwood floor. If you're going to do this, make sure that your plunge does not go through <laughs> your foam because that'll be a super sad day for you when you start cutting up your floor by accident. Um, or especially if you're on concrete, you'll know pretty quick. Uh, but I just bring it a little tiny bit underneath and I just use this like a cutting board. I've been using the same, there's actually a piece of foam underneath the big piece to kind of prop it up so we have a square angle. I've been using the same thing for like, I don't know, long time, a couple of years, and it seems to last forever. So let's look at, uh, let's look at a cut and uh, then I'll bring it over and I'll show you how it's gonna look. So there we go, perfect cut, nice and clean. 
uh, leaves a factory nice edge. Uh, because the rail sits on top of what you're cutting, uh, it, it keeps it squished down. So that, that means that you're not going to get splintering or anything. And that's what that splinter guard is for. All right, we're back at the uh, island, uh, getting ready to mount up the panel that we just cut. So got the panel mounted on here. I'm going to put a few more screws in. Uh, but I wanted to show you before I get all the uh, all the door panels mounted on top of it. So uh, the reason I'm using this melamine uh, panel um, at all is I'm using the doors that you can buy from Ikea. And I'm going to mount them on the back. I'm going to mount three of them. And they're going to act kind of like a panel system to kind of give it that shaker look. There's going to end up being a little gap along the side because these doors are a tiny bit smaller than um, if you had three doors together, you end up a little short with these little gaps. It doesn't look bad, actually. It looks kind of cool. So I need the melamine behind there so that there's something to fill in the gaps. Um, the doors I'm using, in case anybody's interested, I'm using the Torham 0031305. These are the 24 by 30 door. Made in Hungary, these are made of solid ash. Um, a nice hardwood and uh, really been happy with them. This door is actually one I got from that side um, because we ended up putting a microwave in. So I had one door, so I just went ahead and bought two more. And I'm gonna use these as my panel. Um, I'm mounting them unfinished. Uh, and if you're going for the unfinished look, you'd be done. We actually are gonna paint them. I'm gonna paint them all, of, I'm gonna paint all this stuff all at once. I'm setting up a little paint booth in the basement once I get to that point. And I'll do a little video on HVLP painting. Uh, it is so much easier to paint this stuff in a paint booth, in a controlled environment, um, flat, <laughs> not vertical. Um, much nicer finish, much easier to work with, and you're not craning over and trying to do anything difficult. So um, what I'm doing to screw these in is I'm just screwing in from the back here. So I've got a two inch screw. It screws in through that little gap that we had on the back. Um, and then that screws into the panel a good half inch or so. And that, that makes a really good connection. And I'm doing one in each four corners into the meat of these uh, rails and styles. You could do shiplap. You could run the panel all the way down to the floor if you were going for that more slab look. Um, you could do Wayne's coating. If you wanted to build this out so it looked like a table, you could build legs and do everything. But fundamentally, you really want a strong two by four spine to this thing, a frame to build off of. Um, because if you don't have that strong foundation, everything you throw on here isn't gonna look good. Usually finished pieces like this are more aesthetic than structural. So you kind of want that structure underneath there. So that's what I'm doing on the panels here. I'm gonna finish that up. Um, the whole point of the brackets is so that we can have an overhang like this, and that overhang will allow us to have chairs underneath. Uh, we're going to build this island out of, or the top out of quartz. Um, you can actually overhang quartz a pretty decent amount because it's a synthetic material, um, up to about 12 inches, but it's always nice to have structure underneath. It just makes it much stronger and, uh, I know kids, I know that eventually they're gonna be sitting on here and the next thing you know, it you know, bad things happen. So definitely overhang, if you can, try to structurally support it. Um, we're gonna end up having a waterfall island that goes up this side and then across. And then uh, I'll show you what we're gonna do on the other side in a second. But let's talk about structure for, for these overhangs. So there's a little problem with Ikea cabinets. Let me show you on this side here. One of the problems with the Ikea cabinets, um, or one of the cool things, depends on how you want to see it, is there's no face frame to this thing. So this cabinet is essentially made up of three pieces of wood, a side, a bottom, and another side. There is a back to these things, but it's just plywood. I mean, it's not even plywood. It's just like cardboard. Like this is just, this just makes it look okay. What's holding it together really are these extra metal uh, straps on the top but normally when you're trying to cantilever out to put in something like a uh, like an island bring you around to the side here so you can see that a little better 
when you're trying to cantilever out to do something like an island, you would tie in a long metal strap to the face frame and then to the middle. And then you would have this, this structure so that you could extend that out and cantilever over the island uh, um, and have your kind of bar stool area. There's no face frame to tie into. <laughs> So it kind of creates a problem. You have this like metal bar, but it's not really all that strong. You could try to cantilever onto the actual slab pieces on the side. That's probably what I would do. Um, but that's why I've gone in with this bracket system because I want to really tie it in and I want to have something pretty strong. Um, so that's the way I kind of did it. But there are other ways to do this particular process. Um, the last thing is, so one side's going to have a waterfall. This side is going to be our little wine area. We're not huge wine drinkers, but um, I want to store like six to 10 bottles. Um, so what am I going to do on this side? Well, you can see here, you got your slab, your two by fours, your uh, sandwiched piece of melamine, and then your, your door. I'm going to build a custom panel, just like that door. And this is, uh, this is the beveled edge of what it would look like. And this was from another piece that I ended up not needing. But if you overextend that and bring it right along this side, you can totally cover all that up and it will look super nice. It's gonna, it's gonna basically be like a custom sized door that'll stick onto the side. We'll screw it in from behind and it's gonna look really good and then we'll HVLP paint it. Um, one thing I'm sort of thinking about as I do this is electrical. So we had thought about doing a waterfall on both sides, that's just where the countertop comes up, goes across and then comes back down and hits the floor. Only problem is electrical. If you do a waterfall, this is a great place to put an outlet. I don't know why, but I just can't stand cutting through a giant piece of, you know, stone and putting an outlet in the middle of it. it doesn't, doesn't, yeah, I don't know, style wise, it didn't, I didn't dig it as much. Plus I kind of wanted a little area for, for wine. So uh, mounted up the panels. Uh, there's the brackets. Um, we may not end up needing the brackets. I'm not 100% sure. We're going to see uh, how much overhang uh, ends up happening in the design. Uh, if we keep the overhang small enough, I'll just end up taking those brackets out. But if we have a longer piece, then I'll definitely need them. So I'm glad I did the uh, two by four thing. Anyways, getting ready to do electrical, or I said should say I've already done electrical. I've already run, run my uh, electrical inside the... Um, uh, behind the speed oven and I'm getting ready to cut out a section on the side of this uh, panel But here's a tool I'm using um, If anybody's ever probably a lot of people know what this is, but this is a fine multi-master um, And it's got the sustainer so um, I use that a lot uh, just by the blades throw everything in there and what that's really good for is This particular job. So let me show you what this works for here. So we're gonna cut a hole, and it's gotta be a square, into this panel. Um, so I've already kind of started these sides. I'm using a two by four on the back so it doesn't tear out uh, when I cut through because melamine will definitely tear out. It's like a chipboard. So uh, basically, just set your tool where you want it. I kind of guide it with my hand. that I'm using is a 12-2 uh, uh, armor clad or MC cable um, and I'm gonna put that outlet on the end and that will be the one outlet that we need for the end. I'm not gonna show how I'm doing the met, uh, electrical. Honestly, um, I'm not a professional electrician. I'm not, don't feel comfortable that I would be showing people the absolute correct way and electrical stuff has a lot of codes, a lot of rules. I know them from where I live. I pull the permits, I do all the work. Uh, but that's totally different if you live in a different city, different state, different country. So obviously, you know, do your research if you're gonna do any electrical, uh, but that's the way I'm doing mine. So uh, just wrap this up here and um, 
finish doing the electrical and then maybe I'll do a little closing so video. I've got this uh, outlet. It's one of those uh, kind of outlets now that they sell that has the um, USB built into it as well as this is a 20 amp outlet. So you can plug in, you know, crock pot or big mixer or whatever you wanted to do. A vacuum cleaner, that kind of stuff. Um, we've got ours sort of opened up here. So it's good to see the way we're doing the storage. Um, this is our kind of little pantry drawer. It's three baskets, so you open it up and you got the baskets in here. Um, and you can store a lot of the really bulky items that wouldn't fit anywhere else. I, do, I did have to have the box kind of exposed on the inside, unfortunately. Um, it'll be a little further out eventually and do a video on building a wine storage area for the end here. Um, and I'll show you how I, how I do shaker doors on a... Uh, on a uh, Festool um, uh, router table. So I'll do a little video on that. Got the uh, speed oven wired in and cooked something on it tonight. Worked great. Uh, I've got the small drawer at the bottom here. So there's the drawer at the bottom. Uh, speed oven built in and, and all the wiring I did back there. And then this is the trash can. I thought this is kind of helpful. Um, so, you know, trash is a big uh, thing in a kitchen. You gotta make sure you have you know some kind of trash system we used to just have the the uh, trash can sitting at the end of the counter um, this is much nicer so uh, people have probably seen these at Ikea but basically what you do is it's sensitive to you pushing on the door there's actually I'll, I'll show you what what makes it trigger it but um, if you push on the door so normally I'd bump it with my knee so I'll show you how I normally do it so here's my knee Never works the first time for camera. So um, all you do is, you know, you just push on the door and that triggers the mechanism. And the way the mechanism works, I'll show you back here. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you can see this on the overhead here. I'm gonna close it. This little device back here um, kind of closes and senses the pressure. And then when you push, It opens, it shuts. I usually kind of kick it on the lower side of the door so it opens pretty well. You can also just pull on it. So if you pull on the knob, watch. That works well, but a lot of times you have stuff in your hands. Um, so that mechanism is made by a company called Blum, B-L-U-M, and it's made in Austria. This is really high quality, uh, well-made uh, stuff that Ikea actually somehow got, got the ability to sell. Um, it's not that expensive compared to what it would cost you if you went and got it made at a, like a custom cabinet shop. And in fact, it was cheap enough, relatively speaking, that I bought a spare just in case this one ever burns out. So those are the Blum, uh, the Blum automatic opening. You do need to have electrical back there to do that. And then I'm gonna show you the trash can situation here. Um, Cause again, this is a, you know, I know it's dirty, but this is an important part of the kitchen here. So, um, open the door here. It never works when I'm trying to do it on camera. You ever notice that? All right, so we put two trash cans in here. Um, they are also sold at Ikea. And they fit a 30 gallon uh, trash bag. So we put them in there. Um, we have different colors, so that's actually trash and that's recycling. Um, it's great that these fit 30 gallons. They, they're they a little bit small for 30 gallons, so there's a little bit of extra space, but actually when you're tying up these bags, it's great. Holds a lot of trash before you have to take it out. So, you know, we use it all the time. It's pretty easy. You just kick it, throw your trash away, shut it. Works great. Um, probably the best trash solution I've ever had. And then above it, we actually have a drawer. I'm gonna drop this in here so you can see how this looks. So this drawer is super helpful because it holds the trash bags. So these are huge reams of trash bags that uh, we keep up here, as well as a few other things for the dog and the vacuum cleaner. And what's nice is, is this flush mount. So when you go to shut the trash, I'll show you here. So when you go to shut the trash, it just hides on the back. 
and you don't even see it. So when you need to change the bag, they're right here. You grab a bag, throw it in there, and you shut the door, and then you forget that there's even a trash can there, which is like the best thing ever. All right, so uh, that's what the uh, island looks like so far. Um, I thought it was kind of cool since I didn't have the top on to kind of show you the way we're putting ours together. Um, I did, uh, we tested this a little earlier, um, got it up really, really hot, as hot as it would go. Um, and as you'd expect, it's certified to be put into a wood cabinet and it was cool to the touch around the sides. A little warmer on the back, but they've got more of a gap there. And again, it wasn't too, too warm. So, um, so yeah, so that's what we got. So I'll probably call it quits on this video here and uh, I will do one on building the wine rack in a little bit as a separate video. I hope this stuff helps somebody trying to build an island. I know it's a lot of detail, but you know, I was trying to figure out how to do it and I wanted to share my experience and what I did, uh, especially if you have to support an overhang on the end, how, how you can tie that together. All right, good luck, thanks.